Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we break down everything you need to know about biomechanics, strength training and athletic performance. Today's video is about how different training goals can sometimes contradict each other if you don't know how to balance them properly. Make sure to hit the like button if you find this useful and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for more videos like this. Now let's jump in. When it comes to fitness, most people have more than one goal. You might want to build muscle through hypertrophy training while also improving your agility for sports like tennis or basketball or pickleball. Hypertrophy training is great for increasing muscle size and strength because it stimulates the muscle fibers to a point of fatigue, leading to growth and better muscle definition. But when we combine that with sports that require full body mobility, flexibility and agility, things can get tricky. Sports like tennis, pickleball or basketball demand quick reactions and dynamic movements. That's when balancing multiple goals without proper planning can lead to problems. Let's talk about what happens when you mix these two goals. Hypertrophy training creates micro tears in your muscles, which is what makes them grow. But during the recovery process, your muscle becomes temporarily stiff as they heal, kind of similar to how we immobilize broken arm with a cast for it to recover. Let's explain this more because it's an important thing to understand. Muscle stiffness after a hypertrophy session is a common response to intense training. It occurs due to several physiological processes. Microtrauma in muscle fibers. During hypertrophy focused workouts, muscle undergo micro tears in the fibers, especially when exposed to eccentric lengthening movements or high loads. These micro tears trigger an inflammatory response leading to increased blood flow and accumulation of metabolites such as lactic acid which contributes to stiffness and soreness. Repair and recovery. To repair the micro damage, the body sends nutrients and proteins to rebuild the muscle fibers, making them stronger and larger. This process called muscle protein synthesis contributes to stiffness as the muscle fibers and surrounding connective tissues heal and adapt to the stimulus. Increased muscle tension. After a workout, muscles may remain in a slightly contracted state due to heightened neuromuscular activity. The nervous system keeps the muscle somewhat activated to help with recovery and maintain tension, which can make the muscle feel stiff. Accumulation of fluid. In response to muscle damage, fluid and white blood cells flood the area to assist with repair. The swelling or edema can contribute to the feeling of tightness or stiffness. Fascia tightness. The connective tissue surrounding muscles can also become tight after repeated strain and intense contraction during training. This restricts muscle movement and contributes to the sensation of stiffness. Now let's talk about the duration of stiffness. Muscle stiffness typically lasts between 24 to 72 hours, peaking around 24 to 48 hours post-exercise, often referred to as delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS. However, recovery time varies depending on several factors including intensity of the workout, heavier loads or high volume lead to longer stiffness, individual recovery ability like genetics, hydration, nutrition and rest, and training experience, novice trainees tend to experience more stiffness as their bodies adapt to new stress. Some muscles may stiffen more easily than others due to size and function. Larger muscles like the quads, hamstring, and glutes, which are heavily engaged in compound movement, for example, often experience more stiffness. Muscles involved in eccentric actions, like lowering the weight in a bicep curl, are more likely to develop stiffness due to the great tension they endure. Type 2 muscle fiber or fast twitch are more prone to damage and stiffness due to their explosive nature and susceptibility to fatigue during heavy lifting or high intensity training. The stiffness can vary greatly between individuals based on genetics. Some people may be more prone to muscle stiffness due to their genetic makeup, including their muscle fibers composition and recovery rate. Individuals with better mobility and flexibilities are less likely to experience prolonged stiffness. Beginners often experience more stiffness because their muscles aren't as conditioned to handle the stress. Now that we explained what causes muscle stiffness and its impact, if you go to play a sport the day after an intense hypertrophy session where your muscles are still stiff and recovering and you suddenly stretch or move quickly, that's when injury can happen. Here's another example that really illustrates the problem. Someone trying to build muscle and also train for marathon. These are two different systems in your body at play. 
Hypertrophy training primarily targets fast twitch muscle fibers, type 2 fibers, whereas marathon training focuses more on slow twitch muscle fibers, type 1 fibers. These two types of muscle fibers respond differently to training and have distinct functions. Fast twitch type 2 muscle fibers for hypertrophy. These fibers are responsible for explosive high intensity movements such as lifting heavy weights or performance sprints. These fibers have a high potential for growth like hypertrophy because they generate greater force but fatigue quickly. When hypertrophy is your goal, your training emphasizes strength training with higher loads and lower reps, focusing on eccentric phases to maximize micro trauma, short bursts of energy and aerobic training without relying on oxygen for endurance. This style of training stimulates type 2 fibers leading to muscle growth but with lower endurance. On the other hand, slow twitch fibers are more fatigue resistant and are specialized for aerobic activities like long distance running. These fibers generate less force but can sustain activity for longer duration by using oxygen efficiently. Marathon training focuses on endurance, like long sustained sessions with lower intensity. Aerobic capacity meaning improving cardiovascular efficiency to fuel muscle activity for hours and high repetition, low resistance. This training stimulates type 1 fibers, enhancing stamina but not contributing significantly to muscle size. Combining hypertrophy training with marathon preparation can be challenging because the adaptations required for each goal contradict each other. While both goals are possible to pursue, it is difficult to maximize muscle growth and marathon endurance at the same time. Training for marathon could limit your ability to gain size and strength, while hypertrophy training could reduce aerobic capacity and endurance needed for marathon running. For balanced results, individuals often need to periodize their training, focusing on one goal at a time before shifting to the other. Another key factor people often overlook is exercise quality. Not all resistance training is created equal, especially when it comes to efficiency, targeting muscle growth, and other goals like flexibility or athletic performance. Some exercises might help with hypertrophy but fail to improve your flexibility or mobility. This is where the Brick 20 system comes into play. Unlike other training methods, the Brick 20 exercises allow you to work each muscle in its ideal environment, and this is thanks to the 16 biomechanical factors that determine exercise efficiency. What do I mean by ideal environment? It's about optimizing each movement to stimulate the target muscle efficiently while also stretching it, so you're hitting two birds with one stone. This is what makes the Brick 20 exercises so efficient. You can work on hypertrophy while simultaneously maintaining or even improving flexibility and mobility. It's a system that fits into multiple training goals at once without compromising your ability to move efficiently. Most of you know how much I emphasize the importance of recovery. Recovery is key, no matter what your goals are. If you're pushing yourself with hypertrophy training or sports, your body needs time to repair. It's during recovery that your muscles adapt and grow stronger, while also becoming more flexible and mobile if you incorporate proper stretching mobility work and sports-specific training. Some athletes manage to balance hypertrophy with sports performance, but they are smart about it. They might only do one or two hypertrophy sets to stimulate growth and combine it with explosive lightweight reps or bodyweight exercises. This allows them to recover faster and it doesn't overload their muscles. So how can you safely combine goals like hypertrophy and sports performance without risking injury? It's all about balance. You need to adjust your training volume and intensity based on what your goals are or based on your competition calendar and try to give yourself enough recovery time. Also remember that not all resistance training exercises are efficient. That's why incorporating the Brick 20 is so effective. These exercises allow you to combine multiple goals in one program without overloading your body or risking injury and without jeopardizing recovery. I hope this gave you a clear idea on how different training goals can sometimes work against each other if you're not careful but also how using the right approach can help you hit multiple goals at once. If you find this information a bit overwhelming or you're juggling different goals due to the sports you're practicing or your gym routine, feel free to reach out to me, email me at mo at smarttraining365.com and I will help you create a customized program that fits your specific needs. As usual, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content on biomechanics and optimal training strategy. Drop a comment below and let me know what your training goals are. See you in the next video. Take care.